Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, Doctor Who fans unite. Because you know, it's one of those things that's nice to actually have to report on, well, common sense coming out of Hollywood actors and actresses in this modern era. Because and the reason why we have to report on it is because it's an unusual thing that it's so nice and refreshing to actually hear a relatively gen- genuine and sane argument and conversation against something a lot of the modern censorship that we have seen in our current era that we've seen happen throughout the culture with a lot of people wanting to go out there and add trigger warnings to shows in the past and things like that. There was even one of the Paramount, I think, CEO was asked at one point if they were going to put trigger warnings on any of their old content, and he flat out said, no, it's on demand. If you don't want to, if you don't like it, don't watch it. It's really just all of that simple. And that's really what it comes down at the end of the day. You know there's a rating system out there for a reason. Why, right? There's the things that are like R-rated and PG and G-rated, and you got the same thing with television. You've got M's and all kinds of rating systems. Like, you know exactly what you're getting into more often than not when you go to actually watch these kind of shows. So actually put trigger warnings out there in the beginning of these things to completely and totally take away from it is absolutely insane. And our wonderful, one of my absolute favorite doctors from the modern era, Matt Smith himself of Hot D, a.k.a. House of the Dragon star and fame, is out there pushing back and saying this nonsense is absolutely ridiculous. He is out there blasting the modern sensibility and sensitivity nonsense completely and totally out of the window and giving even some examples of things that he watched as a kid and one of the reasons why he believes Doctor Who has a great example of children's television and why it is so important to not have this kind of nonsense in things in any way, shape, or form. So we're going to check out this article from Deadline.com getting all the juicy details of exactly what our wonderful doctor has said. But before we do, If you do enjoy our content, hit that like button, share with all your friends, and subscribe or follow if you have not already, boys and girls, because we are growing, we are grinding, and I could not do that without every single one of you. We're on our way to 1,300, and I need every single one of your all's help for all of that. Also, leave a comment in the section down below. Is this nice to hear from a Hollywood actor out there? Did you hear something refreshing and common sense from all of them out there? Is it also nice to see one of your favorite doctors out there pushing back against this kind of BS? Also, if he is one of your favorite doctors, make sure you join us at 7 p.m., a Central Standard time every single Sunday night over here on this channel to review when who was good. We're actually currently going through the Matt Smith era and it's wonderful and it's fun. Mr. Grant Gregory and our dear sweet Sunker Maiden have a great time reviewing that show with me and I think you guys will all enjoy it as well. So from Deadline.com House of the Dragon star Matt Smith bemoans policing of stories through trigger warnings. Amen! There should be no policing of stories in any way, shape, or form. I am a free speech absolutist. We allow the free market to decide what things are good, acceptable, and successful or not. Put out whatever you want. Just don't be afraid of the consequences that come with those things. Matt Smith, star of House of the Dragon and The Crown, has doubled down on his criticism of trigger warnings. Our dear sweet Doctor Who. In in an interview with the Times of London, the actor who shot to fame in Doctor Who... Thank you. Who said said that flagging potentially upsetting content was dumbing down storytelling for audiences. But we know that's the goal, right? They want you dumbed down. They want you as an emotionalist drone that will just sit there and consume, consume, consume whatever BS, nonsense, garbage they decide to pump out. Fortunately enough, the majority of the audience out there is still and has always been way smarter than Hollywood. They've caught on to the nonsense and they're rejecting it whole cloth. And trust me, if you see a trigger warning, warning on something, it automatically throws up red flags for everybody, especially the company that's allowing it and doing it. So Smith, was when asked about this, says, too much policing of stories and being afraid to bring them out because a climate is a certain way is a shame. Absolutely. Your current modern sensibilities should not affect the art from before. You shouldn't try to censor it by telling people, well, you shouldn't watch this because it might scare you or it might disagree with some of your modern sensibilities. Oh, the horror of being exposed that ideas that might actually contradict your worldview. I know, shocking concept. Isn't that how things always used to be? Wasn't that like actually the point of going to college back in the day to have all of the ideas that you were raised with challenged? Now it just turns into nothing more than an indoctrination camp where they literally just want to grind out little drones that'll just consume, consume, consume. By not exposing them to anything that they might might cause an emotional response, might affect their sensibilities. Yeah, uh, screw that. Uh, that's how we have the weak 
system that we currently have right now that's failing miserably left and right and burning down all of the overplace. So yeah, Smith is right. You are dumbing things down for an audience when you do that. It's absolutely the truth. You can't have that kind of nonsense. So Smith goes on to say, it's okay to feel uncomfortable or provoked while looking at a painting or watching a play. Absolutely. That's the point. Art is in, supposed to inspire emotion, whether that be emotions of sadness, whether it be emotion of anger, emotion of loss or emotion of joy and inspiration. You see something beautiful. You're inspired by it. You love it. It makes you want to do something great. Or you can watch a piece of art and it can invoke a sense of fear inside of you. That's why people love horror movies or a sense of hope out there. When you see the hero go through his journey and conquer the beast at the end and rescue the princess and do all these other kind of things. These are emotions. Emotional responses. That's what they're supposed to invoke in you. And if you know supposedly what's coming, that completely and totally negates the idea and the creation of the artist behind it and the and the way he wanted it to affect you and the pacing and everything else. It just completely and totally throws you out of the loop from a whole, I guess, cinematic experience. You know, a storytelling experience, it's going to take you out of that and completely and totally screw it up. It's like literally having somebody with a flashing sign on the screen on a Friday the 13th movie going, FYI, Jason's about to shank this, uh, this shank this little college student out here, this little camper out here. He's about to shove a sword, right? He's about to shove his machete right through them. So you might want to turn away. Well, that kind of ruins the whole surprise of what Jason's about to do, because essentially that's what these people are doing with this kind of stuff. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's okay to feel uncomfortable or provoked while looking at a painting or watching a play, but I worry everything is being dialed and dumbed down. We're telling audiences they're going to be scared before they watched something. And that's ridiculous. That's stupid. Because once again, it's also one of those things where it's not just the scary warnings, right? It's not just scary movies. It's like, oh, well, this show, this movie at this time was a reflection of its time, of the things it had at the time, of the politics, of the sensibilities, yada, yada, yada. Some of it might offend you. Well, a lot of people, especially in the modern era now where words somehow hurt people worse than sticks and stones... That will automatically turn people off, which once again will not expose them to ideas that they are not used to. That's the whole point of that kind. That's one of the many points of that kind of stuff. So Smith, who was starring in a British horror film, Star of Ark, recalled renting Slither, Basic Instinct, Disclosure, and Friday the 13th when he was too young. Hey, I feel you on that one, buddy. My grandparents didn't pay attention to a lot of the horror movies that I was renting, and Friday the 13th was always up there on the top. Pretty sure I watched the shout out to Blockbuster, because I'm pretty sure I saw all of the Friday the 13th movies and the Nightmare on Elm Streets, one I probably shouldn't have. Shout out to Skinny Dipping. He joked, the latter absolutely ruined me. I feel that. I mean, seriously, is is any good slasher flick proper without a skinny dipping scene? I mean, let's be real, Matt. Shout out to Matt. See, that's one of the reasons why I love this guy. It's so relatable. It's so relatable. Smith previously commented on trigger warnings in the context of Doctor Who, the BBC, and Disney Plus's sci-fi franchise in which he starred for four years. That's right, because just like they changed the listing of the seasons, a Disney star, Disney Doctor Who, is absolutely season one and is completely and totally separate from everything else that came before. So allow that to give you some solace right there. Although, honestly, it ends. It ends with Capaldi, and it ends... Right before Chibnall starts. Trust me, you don't want any of that nonsense. I promise you that one. I promise you that one. He says, I always thought this was one of the great things of doing Doctor Who. That you scared children in a controlled way, but you did scare them. Imagine you go to kids watching Doctor Who and go, by the way, this might scare you. No. I'm not into it. Exactly. That ruins the whole experience. Batman, the animated series, is another great example. The intro right there. I had my th- I had my three-year-old watch it. I had my toddler watch it. And she goes, ooh, Batman, scary. And she got a little spooked in me because that's what it is. He's Batman. He's the Dark Knight. He's supposed to invoke fear in the bad guys out there. And by watching the show, that you learn that you don't have to be scared of Batman because he's the hero. You only have to be scared of him if you're doing bad things. It teaches a lesson using fear. Fear as the catalyst. These emotions exist inside of you a reason. They were given to you by your creator, by God, for a reason. 
because you're supposed to feel these things. You're supposed to have this happen. You're not supposed to live in some little safe space where it's all just hunky dory and rainbows and unicorns and bubbles. No. That's not the reality of the world. That's not life. You're never gonna, not, nothing's ever going to be perfect. Everything's gonna, always going to be rainbows and sunshine all day. There are things that are going to suck in your life. There are things you're going to be scared of. There are things you're going to struggle against. That's part of being human. So to try to remove these things, to try to warn people away from them, not only is completely and totally immoral and wrong and completely and totally against what art is supposed to do in every shape or form, but it violates the laws and intentions of God. And if that is nothing else, we've seen what happens when you go against the rules of God and the way the world operates. We see that happen with these systems that fail time and time again. Trigger warnings are just one of the many examples of this kind of stuff. And I love that. And it even goes on in the article to talk about how there's other British actors that are coming out and pushing back against this kind of stuff in the exact same case. But to hear Matt Smith, one of my favorite doctors, the doctor that I got to watch new episodes with every week, come out and say something like this, it just once again reiterates why I believe he is one of the best doctors in the modern era with some of the best storytelling. And the fact that he is out there being, well, I don't know you what do you want to call it? Some people want to call it beige. Some people want to call it anti woke. But at the end of the day, it's just common sense. And that is something that the majority of Hollywood and the entire entertainment industry is drastically lacking in the modern era. Everybody wants to worry about people's feelings and nobody getting upset and nobody getting buttered about things. Screw that. Art is supposed to make you feel things. It's supposed to invoke emotions. It's supposed to invoke drastic emotions. That's what good art does. Star Wars, Doctor Who, name your franchise out there. You didn't get invested in them. You didn't love them. They didn't become epic tales in your mind because you didn't fear anything, because you weren't scared for your heroes, because you weren't worried about the monsters coming out of the closet. All of that adds to the emotional response of art and gives you that experience, that escapism. And trigger warnings are exactly what they are using to try to take that away from you. So shout out to Matt Smith, one of the absolute best doctors in the modern era, hands down, coming out and calling out the BS in the modern modern Hollywood and entertainment era. Shout out to Matt Smith. That's why he's the goat, and y'all can kiss our end because trigger warnings are absolute BS, and even the doctor recognizes this nonsense as exactly what it is, nonsense.